Hi guys! Here's another speed paint for y'all. Sinia inspires a lot of my drawings and since this is her first summer, she's been having so much fun exploring everything that comes with it. Her favorite thing so far is insects, especially butterflies. Sometimes we even go out in a field and just chase them together and it's like her favorite activity. So it inspired me to make a drawing of Zinnia inspired by her love for butterflies. She's become really good at catching them though, so let's pretend this is all fun and games and she definitely doesn't end up killing it. And since we're on the topic of dogs, I wanted to talk about something related to it. I've gotten a couple of comments from disappointed people about me not getting Zinnia from a shelter. I have a lot of thoughts about this. So if you're not interested in hearing me talk about dogs for a couple of minutes, that's fine. You can mute the video and maybe put on your favorite song instead. It's all fine. Okay, so there are no puppy farms in Sweden. Neither can you buy a dog from a pet shop here. I don't know when they stopped selling animals at pet shops, but it was a while ago. However, I do know that we have a problem with smuggled dogs. But that mostly occurs within trending small breeds such as French Bulldog, Labradoodle and Pomeranians. And these don't count as breeders since the Swedish Kennel Club doesn't approve of it. And these quote unquote breeders doesn't count as breeders because the Swedish Kennel Club doesn't approve of it. That means that when you register, let's say, a French Bulldog puppy from a smuggler, which is of course kept a secret, the puppy will, since it doesn't come from a registered breeder, count as a mutt. We also don't have wild dogs on the street. In Sweden, we have very few dog rescue shelters located in our country. Most of the Swedish organizations that rescue dogs rescue them from other countries. I have always intended to adopt dogs, but I have also always intended to get them from breeders. I have some breeds that I love and I will get eventually, and there's nothing wrong with that in my opinion. Aside from art, dogs are my favorite thing in the world. I'm actually saving up money to become a dog trainer, and one of my goals is to be able to rehabilitate dogs that might have a hard time adjusting to life with people due to trauma and then find their forever home. Sort of like a foster parent, if that makes sense. And that is one of the reasons that I got Zinnia. When helping a dog, especially a traumatized or timid one, another dog is super helpful. It's not uncommon for scary dogs to be placed in a home with another dog for it to mimic. A dog that will teach them in a way that I, as a human, can't. A well-balanced dog will act as a guide in how to act, feel and behave. For example, if the rescue dog is very stressed around people, the stable dog will be calm and simply not acknowledge the rescue's reaction. In time, the rescue might mimic the behavior of the stable dog instead. Zinnia comes from a line of healthy and stable Eurasias. She's by far the most well-adjusted dog I've ever had. Maybe because this is my first time training a dog as an adult, or maybe because I was extremely careful with picking her. My previous dog had a number of behavioral problems that I was too young to handle, and that especially influenced my decision to get my next one from a breeder. I'm not sure what the rules are in every other country, but in Sweden there are very strict rules of how to be a legit breeder worthy of recommendation from the Swedish Kennel Club. And being able to choose a breeder you click with is so important because this breeder will be in the best of cases lend you help and advice whenever you need it. In many cases the breeder is also extremely picky about who gets to buy one of their puppies. When picking Zinnia, I also got a breeder that made us know that if we were ever considering rehoming her, they'd want her back. I got a community of people with experience from the breed that I can share experiences with. All of that is a safety net that I really really need and appreciate right now. Something that I see very often is that people adopt dogs that end up needing rehoming within a year of being adopted. I see this because I occasionally check sites where you can buy or rehome dogs. Not at all because I desperately want more dogs or anything. And this really makes me sad because you literally went through all the trouble by bringing a dog into your home, perhaps all the way across the world, into your life and you just gave up on it. And obviously things like that happen, it's not guaranteed to be a perfect fit 100% of the time. However, something that I see very often is that the dog is rehomed because of quote unquote troublesome behavior, which could be easily linked to trouble adjusting to life in a completely different environment than they've ever known. The dog is completely at your mercy and you need to respect that this dog might have spent its entire life on its own. 
fought for its life or been locked up in a pen surrounded with plenty of other dogs that together create a very stressful environment for all of them. Most of the time that's the best people can give them. A shelter where they have access to food, water and a bed to lie in. Which of course is amazing. I look up to people that devote their lives to helping animals. Most shelters run on donation money which makes their work very very limited. Even if these people do their very very best, they're very limited by lack of money. Shelters can be very stressful for dogs because they are always surrounded by other pens with other restless dogs inside. They might be barking non-stop and that alone does a lot to a dog. And here we're not even mentioning the possible trauma or baggage from before they ended up there in the first place. And even if they aren't rescues, you still see dogs that get rehomed all the time for various reasons. Dogs that come from loving families that did the best they could, but it still didn't work out for them. As quote unquote little as not giving a dog enough exercise or mental stimulation can F up a dog a whole lot. And in these cases, you can trace back all the previous owners, every single issue they might or might not have had, and perhaps even generations back. So imagine a rescue where none of this information is available. It's scary to me and I don't take that commitment lightly. I really want to adopt a dog when I have all the means ready to know that I can care for this dog no matter what it's been through. If you're serious about adopting a dog like this, it is so important to read up on dog's behavior, how to train it and foster it, not to mention plan ahead. I want kids in the future, which rules out a lot of dogs right there. You can't expect the dog to be perfect. There might be hidden fears or triggers that you don't know about until you encounter them. Personally, I'm not there yet and that's why I didn't get a rescue. I want to know that when I get a rescue, I can definitely give it the life it deserves and help it in every way I know how. I know that not every case is doomed to be troubling, but you need to be prepared for it. Every dog deserves that. At least this is how I see it and where I'm at right now in my life, I can't give a dog that. I wish to be soon though, if it were up to me we'd have like 3 dogs already. I can talk endlessly about dogs honestly, I just want to share some of my thoughts about the matter. And about the drawing, this drawing took about 2 hours to draw. As you can see I have a lot of other people's art around my piece when I draw and that's because I find a lot of inspiration in other people's art. I will link to every single one in the description if you want to see more from them. I'd love to hear all about your opinions on shelter dogs versus breeded dogs. So if you want, you can share some of your thoughts with me down in the comment section.